Welcome to Chapel. In today's Good Friday Chapel, we will be talking about Jesus' death, which will later lead to his resurrection during Easter. In this chapel service, we will put out seven candles in total after each message to represent the progression of darkness towards Jesus' death. We also ask that you could stay silent during this chapel service. Please pray with me. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for sending your Son, Jesus Christ, on the cross for our sins. We ask for your forgiveness for sinning against you, Lord. Please be in our hearts and minds as we mourn the day Jesus Christ was condemned on the cross. Thank you for everything you have blessed us with. We love you, Lord. In your name we pray. Amen. Please give a warm welcome to today's chapel speaker, Mr. Benyara. It might be weird to call this day Good Friday. As we will hear, today is the day we remember Christ's death. Some other names could easily be Sad Friday, Bad Friday, or as some German Christians call it, Sorrowful Friday. It is easy to want to call this day something else than good, because on paper it does really seem like a day we will leave sorrowful. Growing up, I remember Good Friday services being incredibly serious. There was always a big cross set up in the front of all the seats in church. You'd walk in, get a small piece of paper, and during a certain part of the service, everyone was instructed to bring that piece of paper they had just written uh, a sin on and bring it up to the front and nail it to the cross. This was a symbol or it helped us remember the reason Jesus went to the cross. Now, I grew up in a family where we would go to church every week. So usually after church, I'd talk to my aunts and uncles and play on the playground with my cousins. This didn't seem like it was allowed on Good Friday. You'd leave in silence, and it was always weird figuring out when it was okay to talk again. I think the unspoken rule in my family is that when we got into the car, we were able to talk again. As we might see in chapel today, there is a somber and more serious tone. It is important to remember what happened at this point in the history of God and his creation. This was the culmination point of the work God was doing throughout all time. It was the reason Jesus came to earth and what he was sent to do. As we read through Matthew, what happens seems like the opposite of good. Jesus was accused of one of his close friends. He was beaten, mocked, and eventually killed. If you are a sophomore or an older class member here, you might remember the difficult scenes from the Passion of the Christ and the brutality of Jesus' torture. These events occurred on Good Friday. It would make sense to remember why he suffered. You probably have heard quite a few times that the penalty of sin is death. That is the result of sin being brought into the world. It separates us from God and it results in our death. Romans 5 states, Just as sin came into the world through one man, and death through sin, and so death spread to all men because all sinned. Death spread through the entire history of mankind, and we still experience the challenges of it in our lives today. In the Old Testament, the practice was to offer up a sin offering. The spotless animal was to be taken for the sins of Israel. This animal's blood was spilled, and the sins of Israel were atoned for. The sins were covered over by this sacrifice. This practice continued. The blood was shed, and each year... God's people were atoned for. Sin results in death, and, and it requires blood. Hebrews 9 says, Indeed, under the law, almost everything is purified with blood, and without the shedding of blood, there is no forgiveness of sins. Blood is a requirement, not one option, but the only option for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus' death was the final sacrifice for sin. His death covered over the sin of the entire world for all time. As Paul writes in Romans 3, for there is no distinction, for all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God, and are justified by his grace as a gift, through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus, whom God put forward as a propitiation by his blood, to be received by faith. The wrath of God and all the sin in the world were settled for all time on a single cross. On that day, the perfect sacrifice of Jesus that all the sacrifices in the Old Testament were pointing to was put to death. Unlike the sacrifices in the Old Testament, which needed to occur on a regular basis, Jesus' sacrifice was once for all. Good Friday gives us the clearest picture of God. It shows us that God recognizes the ramification of sin and that it would result in our death. He also knows we are unable to offer up the perfect sacrifice necessary, so he offers himself. He comes to earth and offers himself as the once-for-all sacrifice necessary to redeem all of creation. Good Friday tends to end on a somber note. It ends with the death of Jesus and him being brought off the cross and put into a tomb. It ends with Jesus exclaiming, it is finished, and dying. The curtain in the temple tear, 
The earth shakes, the rocks are split. Lots of things happen at this point. But something that is occasionally left out is verses 52 and 53 of Matthew 27 that read, The tombs are also open. And many bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised, and coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. Even on the day of his death, we are reminded of the hope of the resurrection. We aren't left with the sadness and despair of Christ's death only. We are reminded of the reason for it, the resurrection of his body, the resurrection of all the saints, and the resurrection of each of us at the time of his return. So on this Good Friday, hope to you remember that Christ's sacrifice was once for all, was for all of your sins, mine and yours, and for all time. Jesus' sacrifice was the eternal sacrifice that brings us back to God. Thank you. swords and clubs from the chief priests and the elders of the people. Now, the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I kiss is the man. Seize him. And he came up to Jesus at once and said, Greetings, Rabbi. And he kissed him. Jesus said to him, Friend, do what you came to do. Then they came up and laid hands on Jesus and seized him.
high priest stood up and said, Have you no answer to make? What is it that these men testify against you? But Jesus remained silent, and the high priest said to him, I adjure you by the living God. Tell us if you are the Christ, the Son of God. Jesus said to him, You have said so, but I tell you, from now on you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of power and coming on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his robes and said, He has uttered blasphemy. What further witnesses do you need? You have now heard his blasphemy. What is your judgment? They answered, He deserves death. Then they spit in his face and struck him, and some slapped him, saying, Prophesy to us, your Christ, who is it that struck you? When morning came, all of the chief priests and the elders of the people took counsel against Jesus to put him to death. And they bound him and led him away and delivered him over to Pilate the governor. Then when Judas, the betrayer, saw that Jesus was condemned, he changed his mind and brought back the thirty pieces of silver to the chief priests and the elders, saying, I have sinned by betraying innocent blood. What is that to us? See to it yourself. And throwing down the pieces of silver onto the temple, he departed, and he went and hanged himself. They had then a notorious prisoner called Barabbas. So when they had gathered, Pilate said to them, Whom do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus who is called Christ? Now the chief priests and elders persuaded the crowd to ask for Barabbas and destroy Jesus. The governor again said to them, Which of the two do you want me to release for you? And they said, Barabbas! Pilate said to them, Then what shall I do with Jesus who is called Christ? Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Let him be crucified. They stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him, and twisting together a crown of thorns, they put it on his head, and put a reed in his right hand. And kneeling before him, they mocked him, saying, 
Hail, King of the Jews. And they spit on him and took the reed and struck him on the head. And when they had mocked him, they stripped him of the robe and put his own clothes on him and led him to, away to be crucified. As they went out, they found a man of Cyrene, Simon by name. They compelled this man to carry his cross. And they, when they came to a place called Golgotha, which means place of skull, they offered him wine to drink, mixed with gall. But when he tasted it, he would not drink it. And when they had crucified him, they divided his garments among them, casting by lots. Then they sat down and kept watch of him there. And over his head, they put the charge against him, which read, this is Jesus, King of the Jews. From the sixth hour there was darkness all over the land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried out with a loud voice, saying, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani. That is, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And some of the bystanders hearing it said, This man is calling Elijah. And one of them at once ran and took a sponge, filled it with sour wine, and put it on a reed and gave it to him to drink. But the other said, Wait, let us see whether Elijah will come to save him. And Jesus cried out again with a loud voice and yielded up his spirit. And behold, the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom, and the earth shook and the rocks were split. The tombs were also opened, and many of the bodies of the saints who had fallen asleep were raised. And coming out of the tombs after his resurrection, they went into the holy city and appeared to many. When the centurion and those who were with them, keeping watch over Jesus, saw the earthquake and what took place, they were filled with awe and said, Truly, this was the Son of God. 